That was his life. Now today, for all of us, if we want to understand the reality properly, we should feel that he was performing these austerities. He was fasting, taking severe vows for years at a time for you and me. Because Advaita Prabhu was, is the all-pervading Lord. He's not just crying out for a mass of people that he doesn't personally concern himself with. He's the Lord in everyone's heart, very personalized, not only at that present time, but for the future as well, in the age of Kali. He was personally feeling the pangs of the sufferings of your soul and my soul. And he was weeping, weeping to see us, each of us, individually. He was seeing into your heart today, knowing past, present, and future. Seeing into your heart today. What was your condition? How bereft you were. And he was crying to Lord Chaitanya to come down to this world to save you and me. And it was by the love and compassion of his prayers that we have been delivered. On this day, we should express our deepest gratitude to Sri Advaita Charya. He was the seed that actually gave us all the chance to love Krishna. Yes, years passed. Fasting, sacrifices, prayers, and millions of tears. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami explains the three external reasons for Lord Chaitanya's appearance. Number one, to respond to the call of Adwaitacharya. To establish the Yuga, the, the Yuga Dharma of the Nam Sankirtan movement and to fulfill his prophecy in Bhagavad Gita that in each age he will come to deliver the pious annihilate the miscreants and reestablish the principles of religion. It's very interesting because our beloved Srila Prabhupada, he tells us that when he was young, he was in a drama. And they practiced for this drama for about one year just for one performance. It was a very serious drama. And he was given the role of Adwaita Prabhu. He was just a boy at the time, small boy. He was given the role of Adwaita Prabhu to be crying to Lord Chaitanya to deliver all the fallen souls of the age of Kali. I don't know what they call it in Bollywood, but it was a very, very perfect casting for that role. Because Srila Prabhupada's whole life would be to fulfill that same mission of Sri Adwaita Prabhu. On the full moon, of the month of Palgun, during a lunar eclipse, everyone was chanting the holy names of Hari 
to counteract the inauspiciousness. And in Shantipur, Sri Adwaita Prabhu and Haridas Thakur, seeing everyone chanting, they were ecstatic. Let this eclipse last forever. That was their thoughts. And it was at that moment that the Supreme Personality of God had appeared from the womb of Sachi Devi. Just like the moon emerges from the ocean. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, Haridas Thakur and Adwaita Prabhu felt such exhilaration in their hearts, even though they were many miles away. Just from the ecstasy that was in their hearts, they could tell that the Lord had appeared. And they went mad in ecstasy, dancing, and nobody could understand why. Sri Adwaita Prabhu sent his consort, Sita Thakurani, to bring auspicious gifts for the newborn child of Sachi Devi. And when she saw him, she understood that the same Gopal who performed his pastimes in Gokul has appeared in this beautiful golden form. We know how in his early years, Nimai disguised his identity and even hid his mission. He was a very restless, mischievous child, a very bright but apparently arrogant student. And Advaita Prabhu and the other Vaishnavas, they were praying to Krishna because the Lord covered over his real identity so that even Advaita Charya, Haridas Thakur and the others They were not allowed to be aware that he was actually the Lord that they prayed for. It was the Yogamaya potency. They had such attraction for him because they felt the same experience of being with Krishna in his presence. But at the same time, they felt impossible to be with him because he was always speaking about mundane subject matters like grammar and Sanskrit intricacies and he was always challenging them to arguments. They would pray to Krishna sometimes day and night please make Nimai a devotee if he becomes a devotee, he can make the whole world Krishna conscious. They were praying to Krishna, and Nimai was receiving those prayers. He was so happy with the love of his devotees. Srivas Thakur, Advaita Charya, Haridas Thakur, all these people, they were just having Nam Sankirtan practically day and night, praying to Krishna to make Nimai a devotee. They loved him so dearly. And when Nimai returned from Gaya, after receiving initiation from Ishwara Puri, he was a devotee like this world has never seen. The absorption that he had in Krishna, the ecstasies that were exhibited on his body, were unparalleled. One day, Gadadhar and Nimai went to Adwaita's house, and Adwaita was worshipping the Lord with Ganji's water and Tulsi leaves, raising his arms, loudly chanting the holy names. 
When Nimai saw Adwaita in such a state of ecstatic love, he was so moved he fell unconscious. While he was laying there unconscious, Adwaita Charya, he looked at Nimai. At that time, Nimai was about 18. Adwaita Charya was about 70. He was 52 years older. And he brought all the paraphernalia of worship and began to offer it to Nimai, who was laying unconscious. He started putting sandalwood and, and tulsi on his lotus feet, offering beautiful prayers. Namo Brahmanya Devaya, Go Brahmana Hitaya, Chajagat Hitaya, Krishnaya, Govindaya, Namo Namaha. Taking dust from his feet, offering him flowers and frankincense and f five pronged ghee lamps. And Gadadhar, who was Nimai's friend, he didn't know what was happening. He said, Adwaita Prabhu, he's just a child. Why are you worshiping him? And Adwaita Charya said, when will you give up the misconception that he is only a child? And then, at that moment, Gadadhar Pandit understood he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That was the power of Adwaitacharya's conviction. But after that, Adwaitacharya decided, I want to test my Lord. So he left Navadweep and went to his house in Shantipur. Meanwhile, Vishwambar, or Nimai, he began having kirtan day and night with the Vaishnavas. In fact, that's practically all they did, is just do Namsan kirtan. Such a higher taste they had. Practically all day and all night, they were just chanting the holy names together loudly. And it wasn't that everybody liked it. Mo many of the materialistic people hated them for it. But they didn't care. They just went on chanting the holy names. Nityananda Prabhu came and joined the party. And one day, Lord Chaitanya said to Ramai Pandit, go to Shantipur, to the house of Adwaita, and give him this message. Tell him that that person who he prayed for, fasted for, endured great sacrifices for, cried millions of tears for, that that person has come to deliver the fallen souls of this age through promoting the congregational chanting of the holy names. Ramai Pandit asked, how will I know where his house is? He said, you just go, you will find it. So he walked from Sri Navadweep to Shantipur. And by Lord Chaitanya's mercy, he went directly to Sri Adwaitacharya's home. Adwaitacharya was immersed in worshiping the Lord when he saw Ramai Pandit. And he said, oh Ramai, you have come with a message for me? What is your message? Ramai Pandit said, you are, I think you already know my message. <laughs> he said, you have, come, you have come to take me to meet that person in Navadweep? He said, yes, come, let's go right now. Adwaita said, where in the scriptures does it say 
that the supreme personality of Godhead will take his birth in Navadweep to deliver all the fallen souls through the congregational chanting of the holy names. You are the brother of Sri Thakur. He knows, and you should know, that I am a man who accepts things that are based on the Shastra. Where does it say? Ramai Pandit remained silent. He said, you already know. <laughs> Adwaita Charya said, what is the message he has given me? Ramai Pandit said, he has given you this message that that person that you prayed for, cried for, took vows of austerities for, and fasted for so many years for, that that person has descended. He's here, and he's waiting for you, and he wants you and your whole family to bring all the paraphernalia of worship so that you can show your love for him. When Adwaita Charya heard that, he danced in ecstasy. Sita Thakurani and Atutananda, who was a boy, they wept in ecstasy. Immediately the whole family began to gather all the paraphernalia to worship the Lord and brought it to Navadweep. But when they arrived, Adwaita Charya said, I must test to see if my Lord really understands my love for him. He said, I am going to hide in the house of Nandanacharya. Do not tell anyone where I am. I will only come before the Lord if the Lord calls for me. So he went to Nandanacharya's house with his family. And Ramai Pandit came to Srivas Angam, where Lord Chaitanya was sitting with his devotees. As soon as Ramai Pandit came in the room, Lord Chaitanya said, Ramai, I know that Adwaita Prabhu, that person who called for me and woke me up when I was sleeping in the ocean of milk and brought me to this world. He is now hiding in the house of Nandanacharya. Tell him I'm waiting for him. <laughs> when Adwaita Prabhu came, he fell and prostrated obeisances at the feet of Lord Chaitanya. And he and his whole family worshiped the Lord with very great love and devotion. And from that day, all the Panchatattva was together. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Although Advaita Prabhu was the one who brought Lord Chaitanya to this world, he was the, the last one to actually join the Pancha Tattva in Nam Sankirtan. And together, sometimes in the house of Chandrasekaracharya, sometimes in the house of Srivas, sometimes in the house of Lord Chaitanya himself, Kirtan was always being chanted. For a full year, they had their Nam Sankirtan all night and all day as well. But do not think that even the Lord can escape criticism. Because all the, though the devotees were saturated in bliss in these kirtans, the materialistic people could not tolerate it. To them, it was just loud noise. And many of them were actually great scholars. Some of them were very wealthy people. Many were very, very prestigious Brahmins. But they were envious. The more Lord Chaitanya and his devotees gained popularity, the more they steamed with envy. 
and became more and more vicious. They were spreading propaganda that in the house of Srivas there was horrible illicit activities going on. That they were taking drugs, they were drinking wine, they were seducing young virgin girls and bringing them in to have sex with them. This is what many powerful Brahmins were spreading around. Was there any trace or grain of truth to it? But they wanted to destroy the reputation of Lord Chaitanya and his associates. They were threatening, violent threats to the devotees. In fact, when Adwaita Charya was asked for a blessing by Lord Chaitanya, he said, the chandalas, the common women, the common simple people, everyone, even the ignorant, give them all Krishna Prem. But these proud people, attached to their high education, their wealth and their prestige, who blaspheme your devotees due to envy, let them go to hell. That was the, that was the benediction that Adwaita Prabhu asked for. Of course, even that's mercy. So, one day, Nimai was going to Srivasa's house, and some of these very envious Brahmins approached him and said, Ah, Nimai, do you know that so many people are envious of you? So many people hate you because of your loud chanting? You're creating so much disturbance. You're not even allowing people to sleep properly. Where in the scriptures does it say to do all these things? To dance around like madmen? In fact, they have already gone to the king to complain about you. And he's sending his soldiers to arrest you. The king wants to talk to you. Nimai said, oh, that's very good. He said, I have been studying so many scriptures for so many years and nobody wants to talk to me. <laughs> now the king wants to talk to me. I'm taking this as a great opportunity. He said, he's a Muslim king. He hates you. He's coming to hear you chant the holy names. That's what he's coming for. He said it with such hatred and sarcasm. The Lord Chaitanya just walked away. Then he went into Srivasa's house and said to the devotees, I have just been associating with materialistic, envious atheists. Chant the holy name. Let us have kirtan. I need to be purified. So the kirtan began. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, um, he started dancing. But then he stopped the kirtan. He said, due to my association with these people, I am not feeling the ecstasy of love of God in this kirtan today. I'm not feeling the ecstasy of love of God. You see, for Lord Chaitanya, he was teaching us that performing kirtan is not just a ritualistic activity. It's not something that we show off to others. It's not something we do simply because we're supposed to. It's the feeling, the experience of total absorption that really makes the kirtan great. He felt depressed because he was not absorbed in ecstatic love while chanting the holy names said, I do not feel anything. And Adwaita Charya, he took advantage of the situation. I'm going to go back a few days 
and then continue the story. Lord Chaitanya always treated Advaita as a guru, offered him respects, and was eager to serve him. But Advaita Charya couldn't tolerate this. His position was to be the servant of the servant of the servant. He did not want to be honored by the Lord. He did not want to be served by the Lord. He wanted to be the menial servant of the Lord. But Lord Chaitanya, he would forcibly take dust from Adwaita's feet. And Adwaita Charya could not stop him because the Lord was so powerful. It's very difficult. One time, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the kirtan, was so ecstatic that he went into a swoon and fell unconscious. And at that time, Sri Adwaita Prabhu took the opportunity to bathe his feet with his tears and take the dust from his feet and smear it on every part of his body. When Lord Chaitanya came up from his ecstasy, he began dancing again. He said, I am not feeling ecstasy. Did anyone in this room touch my feet? The devotees were afraid to tell on Adwaita Charya because he was their leader. And they were afraid to lie to Lord Chaitanya. So they didn't know what to do. But Advaita Charya came forward and he said, when a thief wants to steal someone, if that person is awake and vigilant, the thief wakes, waits for his victim to be asleep, then he will plunder him. He said, you give everybody love of God by giving them a chance to serve you, except Srivas and myself, even the gardeners, even the street sweepers, even ignorant people, even people with no caste. You're giving them all love of God by allowing them to serve you. Everybody except Srivas and myself. Rather than giving us a chance to serve, you serve us. Rather than giving us a chance to touch your feet, you touch our feet. Rather than giving us a chance to honor and respect you, you glorify us. Therefore, we are so unfortunate. Therefore, I have stolen from you today. Lord Chaitanya, upon hearing that, he gave a good lesson to Advaita Charya. He went and took the feet of Advaita and put it right on his head. Advaita was squirming to get away, but he could not escape. Then he took those feet and held them for a long time right over his heart and began to glorify Advaita as his guru. So on this particular day, when Lord Chaitanya was not feeling ecstasy of love of God, he asked, where is it? Advaita said, because you are not giving it, I have stolen it from you. Lord Chaitanya was silent. He ran, broke right through the door. The devotees were really startled. They had never seen the Lord in that state. Adoita had taken the dust from his feet. This is how he reacted. And then he ran, and Haridas Thakur and Nityananda Prabhu followed him. They saw Lord Chaitanya dive right in the Ganges and go underwater. 
Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas in a panic, they ran and they dove in after him. Nityananda Prabhu grabbed the Lord's hair. Haridas Thakur grabbed his feet and they pulled him to the bank. Lord Chaitanya looked at them and said, Why did you pull me out of the Ganges? Nityananda Prabhu said, Why did you dive in to take your own life? Lord Chaitanya said, Because I have no love for Krishna. If I had even a drop of love of Krishna, I could not, I could not live without Krishna. The fact that I'm still living means I have no love for Krishna. What is the value of this human life without love for Krishna? Why are you tormenting me in this way? Nityananda Prabhu said that your own servant, he may have acted inappropriately, but he loves you as his life and soul. Why do you punish us in this way? Lord Chaitanya said, If you tell anyone that you have seen me, then you will never see me again. Then Lord Chaitanya went to Nandanacharya's house to hide. Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas came back to Srivasangam. The devotees were devastated. They never saw the Lord in that state. Where is Lord Chaitanya? Where is our Gaur Sundar? Nityananda and Haridas had to follow the Lord's order. We have not seen him. We searched. We do not know where he is. All of the devotees, they feared that the Lord had left the world altogether. He had abandoned them because of their offenses. Besides themselves, their entire consciousness was an utter devastation. Meanwhile, Lord Chaitanya appeared at Nandanacharya's house, soaking wet. Nandanacharya invited him in and gave him fresh, dry clothes, offered him worship. Lord Chaitanya said, I want to hide in your house. And then Acharya said, how is this possible for you to hide in my house? And then he said, you try to hide as the super soul in everyone's heart, but still you appear age after age after age in your various incarnations. You tried to hide in the ocean of milk, but even you can't hide there. So how are you going to hide in my house, in a city teeming with millions of people? Lord Chaitanya said, do not tell anyone that I am here. They spent the entire night just hearing and chanting the glories of Krishna. As Nandanacharya worshipped him with pure love. The next morning, the Lord knew the heart of each and every one of his devotees. He told Nandanacharya, bring Srivas here, but don't tell anyone that I am here. Srivas came, he saw Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya said, how are all the devotees and especially how is Adwaita Prabhu? Srivas said, the devotees, since the time you left, they cannot eat, they cannot sleep, they are tormented with pain from the core of their hearts. They feel that you offended them, that they offended you. They feel that you have abandoned them. They're worried that they may never see you again. They're all simply just laying on the floor, crying. And Adwaitacharya, he feels that he's totally responsible for you leaving. He's fasting, just laying in the ground, weeping, constantly. His heart is broken. His mind is devastated. Please save him. 
Lord Chaitanya went right to where Adwaitacharya was. He said, Adwaita Prabhu, I am here. Come, see me. Adwaita was so embarrassed, so ashamed that he spoke what he felt to be so whimsical that the Lord was angry with him. All he could do was look at the Lord's feet and cry. Lord Chaitanya said that when a king has a high-posted minister, that minister will take the taxes from the people and give it to the king. And the orders of the king and the gifts of the king, he will deliver to the people. He's in such a high position. But if that minister engages in sinful activities or offends others, then the king will punish him. Why? Because he is the servant. So Advaita Prabhu, in my punishment, I have accepted you as my servant. Advaita Prabhu became ecstatic. He clapped his hands and he danced all over the room. That was all he wanted, was to be the servant of the Lord. But then again, again, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu honored him, worshipped him, and this was so painful to Advaita Prabhu that once and for all he wanted to prove himself to be the servant by receiving the punishment of the Lord. Now as devotees, we love to be praised, but we do not love to be punished. Because being punished is a demeaning position. It's a belittled position. But this was Advaita Acharya's goal in life, to have this most menial position where he would be punished as a servant. But how to get that punishment? He schemed for many days and came to a conclusion <clears throat> by preaching impersonalism. So Advaita Prabhu left Navadvipa and went back to Shantipur. Now he couldn't teach impersonal to the devotees, so he started recruiting new people. And he was preaching from the Yoga Vashishta. Actually, he regularly preached from Yoga Vashishta, which is usually one of the main books that impersonalists like to preach from. But Advaita Acharya would speak Every single verse of the Yoga Vashishta, he would explain it to, to e glorify the personality of Godhead in the path of bhakti. He was such a master. But in this occasion, he was preaching impersonalism with great enthusiasm. And more and more new people were coming and being affected by his preaching. Haridas Thakur was watching it all, and he knew the heart of his best friend. He simply laughed. He was preaching to his students that within the scriptures, jnana, or empiric philosophical speculation, is the essence and the goal. And devotional service is subsidiary, dependent on jnan. He said, it is like, devotional service is like a mirror. And speculative knowledge is like the eyes. What value is a mirror without eyes to see it? Hare Krishna. Therefore, I declare with all authority, that the perfection of life can only be achieved through philosophical, deductive knowledge. 
and devotional service is only subordinate to that. It was getting more and more followers. This news came to Lord Chaitanya in Navadweep. He said to Nityananda Prabhu one day, let us go to Shantipur and visit Advaita Prabhu. They walked along the bank of the Ganges. In Lalitapur they met that tantric sannyasi. And they jumped to the river and swam to Shantipur. Came out of the river, wet. They approached the house of Advaita Prabhu. Advaita Prabhu was just giving a lecture sitting on a raised asana. When he saw Lord Chaitanya coming, he began to preach impersonalism louder and more dynamic than ever before. Lord Chaitanya could not believe what he was hearing. He cried out, Advaita! What are you speaking? I have a question for you. Adoita was so empowered in his enthusiasm. He said, what is your question? He said, of the two, devotional service or speculative knowledge, which is superior? Adoita Prabhu, with a voice roaring like a lion, he cried out, of the two, speculative knowledge is always superior. Devotional service is always subordinate. Lord Chaitanya became so mad. He ran up to the stage in front of all the students, in front of Adoita's own wife and son. And he dragged Adoita down from the stage onto the ground, pushed him to the ground, and started beating him. Everyone was shocked. Haridas Thakur was shocked. Nityananda Prabhu was laughing. <laughs> Sita, the wife of Adoita was crying out, he's an old man, you're going to kill him. Please spare his life. He's just an old Brahmin. Don't beat him. The Lord Chaitanya did not hear a word she said. He just beat and beat and beat. And finally, he sat down and said, Nara, Adoita, what have you done? I was sleeping peacefully in the ocean of milk and you brought me down to this world exclusively to fulfill the mission of spreading pure devotional service. <laughs> 